Good morning. I um, want to welcome you to uh, Montevideo, Minnesota. This is the traditional homeland of the Dakota people, the Ochequi Shakoe, uh, seven council fires. Uh, the Anishinaabe also lived in this area. <clears throat> there were upwards of 20 different tribes in this area at one point in time, and they, they came after the glaciers receded. They came after the buffalo and the deer and everything else. But um, we just pay respects to all indigenous people um, and their elders past, past, present, and emerging. And early, early settlers here were mostly Norwegian. The fur trappers came through first and, and uh, started harvesting the wildlife here. And then later the Germans and the Norwegians and the Swedes and, and mostly the Nordic people came to this area. But we do have people from all over the world you know, that, that live in these communities. And, how did it get named? Uh, so Montevideo was named by the explorer Joseph Nicolet, who was traveling across the mostly prairies, and he came upon, upon the river bluff here, which is the, the shorelines of the ancient Lake Agassiz, and he said, from the mount I see, so that's Montevideo, which is mountain view. Mm -hmm. And we have a sister city relationship with Montevideo, Uruguay, and we have a town celebration, which is going on right now called Fiesta Days, where we celebrate the partnership between Montevideo, Uruguay, and ourselves. Thank you very much. The day started out with a monster breakfast with my wonderful hosts, Mark and Celeste. Thank you so much for hospitality. It means so much at the end of a long day to have a bed and a warm shower and some company to share as well. I'm not sure what the official division between Midwest and West is, but it certainly felt today that we were approaching it as we crossed the border into South Dakota. We left behind the Minnesota flatlands and crops and entered into the territory of the grassland, the wind. Speaking of the wind, my host, Mark, showed me a very useful website called windy.com. In the East, we don't tend to think too much about the wind on a daily basis, although it's a variable. But here, it's a way of life, and it's one of the first things people check, maybe before the temperature. No one has actually asked me a question yet for a Q&A, but I'll just pretend like you did. Um, so the question is, how much does your bike weigh? Well, it's a question I get a lot, and it's about 90 pounds with water, food, and all the gear on it. I was looking for a step down in intensity and length from yesterday's ride, and I got it in part. Uh, this was actually a longer ride than it shows on the map, and what it says about being mostly flat is a bunch of bull pucky. It is part of the Buffalo Range, which uh, is some of the hilliest uh, areas around here. Uh, the f a farmer was telling me that it actually is, creates a rain shadow. So There's a lot of space out here. Uh, on the 60 mile ride, I really didn't see any commercial uh, establishments the whole way. Just a bunch of fields and a couple of houses dotted along. Looking ahead to the future a bit, I've decided to skip my rest day in Pierre, which is the way they pronounce it around here, in case you were wondering. It is definitely not Pierre. Uh, skip my rest day there and use that uh, to reduce the mileage in general. Thus far, very nice roads in South Dakota, and I nearly crashed another party. If I had come the next weekend, apparently I'd be in the middle of one of the biggest rodeos in the West, uh, and probably wouldn't have found this beautiful campground with some, just a couple of neighbors. I think they'll be quiet, I hope, tonight. And that's about it. Reporting live from Clear Lake, South Dakota. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.